Hello book lovers and welcome to Book Talk Radio Club. My name is Claire Harris and today I'm talking to Nathan Bush. Nathan is the author of the Foley Chronicles, Files from the 8th District, what he calls a faith-based crime series with an attitude. Nathan has been writing since middle high school where he was involved with the school newspaper and literary magazine but didn't publish his first full-length novel until 2016. His goal in writing is simply to entertain his readers and to grow a loyal fan base to spread the word about his stories. Last April we spoke about the first two books in the series. Today we will be talking about the next two in the series, Twisted Christian and Praying Games. Hi Nathan, welcome and thank you for coming back to talk to me about Folly Chronicles and Book Talk Radio Club. Well, thanks for having me back. My pleasure. You describe the Foley Chronicles, Far From the Eighth District, as a faith-based crime series with an attitude. Can you explain faith-based and with an attitude? Yeah, the, uh, I call them uh, faith-based because uh, there's religious overtones throughout every story. I also put in uh, scripture references, and uh, a lot of the characters in the book have uh, faith as the, uh, the backbone of their character. Uh, but the attitude comes in um, with the story arcs, uh, the mindset of the antagonist, you know, how and why they do what they do to these people that they kill. And uh, also uh, some of the detectives' thoughts and actions. Um, as they're, they're regular people, so they have, uh, they have thoughts and, and actions that don't necessarily follow a, a Christian mindset. And of course, the you know, the crimes themselves. You know, it's, there's a crime series, but it, you know it's it's set in a a, a homicide division, so all the all the stories involve some kind of murder. And there's some uh, not not really graphic uh, descriptions of the crime scenes, but you know it's a pretty good description of what happens uh, during the murders. The Foley Chronicles, far from the 8th District. Tell me about Foley. Does this town come from your imagination or does it actually exist? Uh, Foley um, is alive and well, but it's uh, all in my mind. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people don't uh, really understand the creative process and they probably think something's wrong with me. <laughs> but um, even though Foley is a fictional place, you know, I, I see it in my mind. Um, with perfect clarity, um, when the detectives or the or the, the criminals are traveling around and going different places, mm. you know, I actually see those places in my mind. Um, I see the the incidental uh, interactions between the characters and just people on the street, um, just as if I was riding through my own hometown. That's amazing. We well, talked about the first two books in this series, Written in Blood and Root of Evil, in the last interview back in April. And today, as I said, we'll cover the next two, which are Twisted Christian and Praying Games. But, <coughs> excuse me, but first, let's quickly give the listeners a brief synopsis of the first two books. Written in Blood, your first book in the Foley Chronicles, Fast from the 8th District. Nathan, can you give Book Talk Radio Club's uh, listeners a short synopsis of the story, please? Yeah, I can do that. Um, in a nutshell, uh, Written in Blood is about a rookie homicide detective uh, whose Christian senior partner is bound and determined to help him find the salvation that he's looking for. Um, and a serial killer uh, who's basically out to destroy his life. Uh, the backdrop of the story is the killings, but the overall arc um, is that it's never too late for redemption and anyone can find it. Right. And now, Root of Evil, the second book? Uh, well, Root of Evil was actually written um, at the same time as book one. Okay. Um, when I was out of work with a back entry, I wrote uh, both stories uh, in about two two or three months. Um, had a lot more free time back then. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all about the, the downside uh, to the love of money and uh, how far some people go to attain it or to keep it. Um, and it's the only books uh, so far that doesn't have a serial killer as the antagonist. But uh, there's actually two different murders by two separate characters um, in the story. And it also sees the uh, introduction to 
to some new characters that weren't around in book one. Twisted Christian, great title. So here we have Vertigo, a man with a skewed view of scriptural interpretation, who believes he has been chosen by God to pour out his judgment on the men responsible for a young girl's death and bring justice to her and her family. It's a really clever idea for a story, Nathan. What was the inspiration for this storyline? Uh, this is actually uh, probably my personal favourite uh, of the series, even though uh, book one will always be my favorite because it was first mm. um, but I I enjoyed bringing uh, Verdugo into the mix and writing about his ideas and viewpoints uh, Twisted Christian um, really is the one that puts the attitude in the series mm. um, not only because of the antagonist and how he runs, runs rampant through Foley uh, but because of the detective team that's, that's given the job of <coughs> stopping him Right. Um, I think the inspiration really came uh, from a guest speaker that we had at our church years ago. Uh, she works at a, a local organization that helps uh, victims of human trafficking and sexual ex exploitation. Mm. Um, even though the story doesn't really go into deep detail about the subject, um, the research that I had to do was, was eye-opening for me, uh, especially to find out that it actually does happen uh, close to home. Right. Detectives Berg Anderson and John Filcher are thrust together to find Vertigo. One is a self-proclaimed non-believer, the other a professed Christian. Must be a bit of a sticky partnership. How do they handle being thrown together in this case? Ooh, um, it was actually uh, it was actually fun to watch these two guys. Um, <laughs> work together because um, there's, there's nothing like seeing two polar opposites being thrust together and, and go at it sure. um, they're they're not normally a team uh, in the series they have they have their own partners uh, but circumstances uh, put them together for this one um, but they find themselves thrown together um, John Filcher, you know, he's he's a straightforward Christian. He sees things in in black and white. While Berg Anderson, he doesn't consider religion at all, um, or really, uh, he doesn't consider God, and and he believes that uh, everything comes in varying shades of gray. Um, you can read all about his his history um, in a short story that I put out called Dark Blue Rising. Um, and that actually uh, tells his backstory about how he came about and why he is the way he is. Um, now John, he handles uh, the relationship because he has to. You know, he's a he's a by the book kind of uh, detective. He's been doing this job for oh, around twenty years, um, but he follows the book, uh, the you know, the book of the law to, to solve cases. Uh, he's old school. Justice is the most important thing uh, to him, regardless of what you have to deal with while you're working. And Berg, um, whew, what can I say about him? He doesn't care uh, what anyone thinks about him. He doesn't care what uh, he. He's one that uh, if it if it's in his head, it's going to come out of his mouth. <laughs> And, and he, he likes to work cases uh, his own way. Um, he stretches the rules, sometimes breaks them. Um, we've seen that in other other books that he's in. Um, but he still gets the job done. Um, there's a lot of tension between the two of them. Um, but I feel there's also uh, some growth as characters for both of them. Um, they both uh, learn things about each other. Some of the stuff they learn is easy, some of it's not. Uh, but all in all, uh, I think it's a fun ride to, to see these two guys work together. Let's go on to book four now in the Foley Chronicles, Praying Games. Now we have a female murderer and a female detective. Nathan, would you like to give us a brief synopsis of Praying Games? Yeah, um, Praying Games is uh, it's all about a woman. 
um, who has a vendetta against men in general, um, but especially uh, against uh, men that seem to always come out on top regardless of what they do or who they hurt. And she has a history of being drawn to the kind of men that she detests. And in the story, there's uh, there's some glimpses of uh, her past life that she she did. You know, her her thoughts bring her back to some of the men that have done her wrong through her life. Amy is a, Amy is a tech savvy blogger who is tired of being trampled on by men. She concocts a plan to rid Foley of its aristocracy by drawing the men into a deadly game of seduction. The dangerous woman. Tell us a bit more about her character, Nathan. Uh, uh, Amy was uh, she was not an easy character for me to write. Um, she has a, a complex persona, um, and I didn't want to have a, a female protagonist that was just a man that looked like a woman. Mm. And hopefully, I, uh, I got that right. I haven't haven't had a lot of feedback from from women in general about the the kind of character that I wrote for her. But hopefully, I got it right. Um, she she hates men who use their money and power for personal gain. But on the reverse side of that coin, she craves those exact same things for herself. Um, she has a she has a blog that she does um, in the story, and she she rails against men in general on her blog. But in the context that she only does it to keep her followers happy and coming back for more. Um, she hates men who use and abuse women. But like I said before, she's inexplicably drawn mm. to that stereotype person. <laughs> um, she's she's intelligent, mm. but she can also be unstable. And she's playing in the story. She's playing a dangerous game, but she's determined to see it through. Detective Shelby Lynn joins the Eighth District Homicide Squad and is immediately thrust into an untenable situation when she's partnered with a disagreeable Detective Berg Anderson. Why is the situation untenable, and why is this Detective Berg Anderson so, so disagreeable? Well, um, I brought Shelby Lynn into the Eighth District just to be a thorn in Berg's side. Um, she was another. Uh, she's my. Uh, new character she's been in the back of my mind for a while right. um, and I wanted I wanted to be able to put some more diversity uh, into the cast of characters in the stories so I, an, another female that I hope I'm, I'm doing justice on the on the writing for but um, Berg is a hard guy uh, due to his past he keeps everyone at arm's length um, and it's a tough situation for numerous reasons um, Berg prefers to do things his own way. Um, he has issues with authority. And like a lot of, like, I don't know if I can say a lot of, but like some male police officers, female detectives aren't on his list of favorite things. And unfortunately for him, Shelby Lynn is a combination of all of those things. Mm -hmm. She's uh, she's similar to uh, John Anderson, uh, John Filcher, because she has a penchant for doing things by the book. So that's that's a that's a thorn for for Bert. Mm. Um, she outranks him because she's a senior detective, and she's a woman. So those those three things there go completely against everything that he looks at as how he wants things done. <laughs> and of course, she's. From the from the from the outset of meeting him, she she reads him as what kind of person he is, mm. and she's determined that she's going to break him. Right. And over the course of the story, just like within Twisted Christian, both of them see changes in themselves. Um, so really, this could be a team a team to watch in, yeah. in future stories. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. They encounter crime scenes that aren't what they seem. Bugs, drugs, newspaper editorials, 
a possible copycat killer on one of their own in trouble and much more. It sounds so intriguing. So why a crime series in particular? Was there an author, a book or a film that inspired you to write in this genre? I've always, I've always been drawn to crime stories, whether it was uh, movies, books or TV shows. I've, I've been watching uh, police shows on TV um, since, I don't know, back in the 80s. Um, I don't, I don't know uh, how far shows travel around the world um, to be where you guys are, but it started with a show um, when I was fairly young, uh, back in the 80s, uh, a TV show called Hill Street Blues. Oh, God, yeah. Um, it was very big here yeah. in the UK. Oh, is it? Wow. Well, okay. it was, yeah, well, at the I, time, yeah. Yeah. I, well, to me, um, that's that's been the best police show that's ever been on TV. Mm. Um, and even today, I find myself thinking about it as I write. Um, and then, of course, there's the shows nowadays. Um, one of my favorite shows that I watch is uh, Chicago PD. Mm. And uh, Berg Anderson is is actually um, loosely based off of uh, Hank Boyd from that show. Right. It was his his character, you know, he's 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 out. You know, he has compassion for, for you know, people that are the victims of crimes. Mm. And he wants to see things, you know, he wants to see justice done. And sometimes he, he doesn't care how it happens. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's some of where Berg Anderson gets his, his character actions from. Um, but the actual inspiration uh, for my, for my writing um was a book that I read by Randy Alcorn. Um, he wrote a, a series of books um, about a character named Ollie Chandler, who is a, a detective. And uh, after I finished reading one of those, for some reason in my head, I was just like, hey, I think I can do this. <laughs> uh, can I do it? Oh, that still remains to be seen, I guess. Let's talk a bit about you, Nathan Bush, ex-army man, husband and father to five children and an author, of course. You have a blog called Right Here, Right Now, where you share short stories in various genre, life ramblings, a few book reviews, an occasional devotional and some insight on life with an ASD child. Tell me about her. My daughter, she is, she is a pure joy. Oh. Um, She's also a great teacher. Um, and I say that because I never thought I could learn so much from a child. Mm. Um, now, not to take anything away from our other our other four kids and what they've meant to me, but they were typical kids. You know, they had they they followed the the, the standard for you know when when they met milestones and things like that. Mm. But our youngest daughter is anything but typical. Uh, and she's had challenges uh, from the day she was born, really. And she was she was born with uh, bilateral clove feet. So she had to endure a, a lot in the first few years of her life. Mm. Um, and some of that had to do with um, slowing her typical progression and milestones. <clears throat> um, and then she got diagnosed to uh, ASD. Um, it's, it's difficult sometimes, but um, we've learned to roll with the punches. You know, there's a lot of families out there that sure. they go through the same things we go through, and you don't really, until you have a child that's ASD, you don't think about. It. Of course not. You know, I, I, I never, never thought about anything to do with with autism. Uh, you know, you see some people on the streets now and then and wonder about it, but. You don't really think about it until it's brought right into your face. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, but like I said, you know, you, you roll with the punches because that's what she needs us to do. Um, but it hasn't stopped her. You know, she's smart. She's loving. You know, she meets milestones in her own time. Mm. And and she's very energetic. Mm -hmm. She's so, so, so energetic. What do your children think of their dad being an author? Um, I, I don't really know what they think. Um, 
<laughs> it's, it's probably something along the lines of, oh, you write books. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm kidding with that, of course. But, you know, they, they might be proud, but uh, they don't, we don't really talk about it when they're around. Um, every now and then they might say, you know, Know, how's the writing going or you know when's the next one coming out mm. um but my my oldest daughter um she's uh, she's 30 now um and i think she's really the only one who's actually read uh, all of them right. um but she always tells me when she gets done with it she couldn't put it down um so i guess that's something would you like to give out your blog links so people can write um find and read it yeah, um, they can, uh, on the blog, they can see some of the other genres that I just dabble in. Uh, and it was, <coughs> the, the writing I do on there is, you know, it's, it's mostly uh, flash, flash fiction and, and really, really short stories, you know, only a you know, couple hundred to a thousand words on the sure. stories that I put on there. Because um, I don't know if I could write uh, an entire book uh, in another genre, um, but they might enjoy... Uh, the, the little stories that I have on there and the stuff about our home life. Um, now the the title is all in lowercase. I don't know if that if that matters, but it's on WordPress. Um, uh, so the title is just Nathan's Writing Evening okay. at uh, at WordPress.com. You have some fabulous reviews for the Foley Chronicles, Files from the Eighth District. Amongst them being, Nathan creates some of the most demented serial killers taking us inside their perspective to understand why they do what they do. I must say, this actually intrigued me. You seem like such a nice kind of family guy, Nathan. A good man. So how on earth do you manage to create some of the most demented serial killers? Should we be worried? <laughs> um, I, I don't know really that I can explain that because I'm not <laughs> completely sure how it works. Um, but I do know when I when I tell people that these characters come to me with a story to tell, mm. usually they look at me like I'm crazy. Um, you know, non non writers, and unless you deal with writers on a daily basis, you don't you don't think about something like that. Where um, it, it sounds strange when you say, "Oh, you know, I had a I had a dream that this person came to me and said, you know." This is what's happening in my life, and I mm. want you to write it down. <laughs> so, I don't know if I still have any friends or family willing to come around me. Um, <laughs> and my my wife actually told me uh, after reading uh, "Written in Blood" that she will ever look at me the same again. <laughs> she she never knew that I had those kind of things running around in my head. <laughs> well, maybe it's just as well you can put them in a book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so lastly, where can people purchase the Foley Chronicles files from the 8th District? Um, all of my books are available through Amazon. I think you can also get them on uh, Barnes & Noble. They're in ebook and print. Um, hopefully one of these days I'll get around to putting them on hardback. And uh, I'm looking at uh, doing uh, audio books, but co that cost is a little bit expensive right now. But, mm. uh, Hopefully, I'll be able to get it into audio format soon. And, um, I actually did just uh, finished up and uh, sent my stuff to uh, Amazon for book five. So that's also wow. in, in, the, in, the, in the line there now. Um, but a direct link to my author page uh, on Amazon is uh, author.2 mm. slash Nathan Bush author. Now, and the N and the B in my name and the A in author all have to be capitalized or it's right. not going to go to my, to my page. Oh, all right. All right. Well, thank you, Nathan. That was great. I look forward to chatting with you again in the future. And thank you, everyone, for listening to Book Talk Radio Club. Thank you very much, Nathan. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me again. My pleasure. Bye now. <laughs>